Hi, this is Ken with Fitech, and we're going to do an installation on the 69 Chevelle and I'm going to walk you through the selection process for our EFI choice. Um, the motor in this car is a 408 small block. It's got dark uh, heads on it and it's making a little over 600 horsepower. So that's going to dictate which EFI system we choose. Now our top seller is our 600 horsepower 30,002 series uh, with four injectors, but this motor is a little too wild for that uh, EFI kit. So we're going to walk you through on that one. Um, we've got three kits on the table and this unit right here would be our four injector 600 horsepower power adder. Um, next to it is the Mean Street EFI. This one has eight injectors, good up to 800 horsepower. And then our Go Street 400 horsepower four injector. So price point to uh, horsepower is kind of how we at Fitech um, base our units. So we try to give a little bit out there for everybody. Um, if you're not making a lot of horsepower, we keep the price level to your um, power range. So this Chevelle, making over the 650, um, would be put you in the Mean Street EFI. Now also, we have a 1200 horsepower system that controls nitrous and boost, and that does timing. If you're running the nitrous, you're running uh, boost control, you do have to step up to that 1200 horsepower system. That's $1,495. So um, this car right here has a good, EF, uh, good timing system, good, good ignition system. It's got the uh, CDI box already installed, got a good ignition on it. So it's a perfect candidate for the Mean Street EFI. So that's what we're gonna pick for this car. It's uh, 800 horsepower capable system. This will do from 250 to 800 horsepower. And it's got eight injectors, annular discharge, self-learning, does not have timing control built into it, but the car that we're putting it on doesn't need it. It's got a good CDI system, a good ignition, and we're going to walk you through the steps of how to install it. So on the Chevelle, we've already removed the carburetor and this car has already been plumbed with a really good um, fuel system. So the owners put an in-tank pump already and he had it regulated down to work with the carburetor. Um, what else is nice about the car is that it's got a really nice uh, ignition system as well. So there was no reason for the owner to take out that ignition system. So he's got a great CDI box. He's got, you know, a good fuel system in the car. So the Mean Street EFI was just, you know, take the carb off, bolt on the EFI. Um, one thing I'd like to note is that with the power brakes and the PCV valve on the throttle body, we've got two ports for that so that you don't have to tee into it. So we're going to remove the, the vacuum caps and get ready for that. So there's one on each side to remove. So we'll use the right side for the brake booster and the left side for the, for the PCV, get that ready to go. These wires on the back will go to your handheld and the, this will be our feed in from the tank. And on this side, the side with the return, it's also marked return on there. We'll do a close up later. And this will be the return back to the tank. And this has a multi-bolt pattern on the unit. So we'll bolt that on, make sure we have a good gasket. The owner had this nice gasket, so we won't use the one that's in the kit. And we'll bolt the throttle body on. And as you can see, there's not many wires with the Fitech EFI. So this one will go down. There's a heat shield on there for extra protection by the exhaust. We'll put that down by the header. This will go down for your O2 center, your wideband O2. So we'll snake that down, make sure it stays away from the exhaust system. And we've got only a few wires coming out of the whole EFI. So this little guy right here, We'll go to your coolant temperature sensor and that plugs right in. You can't mess it up. And then this is your entire wiring harness for your, for your uh, ECU. So the ECU is right here on the front and this will be the harness that goes with it. I'll show you what these wires go. They're marked on right up against the connector so you can never cut that end off. So everything's double marked at the connector and then it's marked at the end. So there's only six wires coming out of here and that's for fan control, your power, your key, your fuel pump. And we'll get into that in the next segment after we get it bolted down.
The throttle body comes with a six wire connector and that plugs in, let's see, like that. And like I said, they're all marked. So you, when you cut them, you don't lose what the connectors are. And I'll explain, we'll start with the long wires and then we'll go to, to the short. So the long orange wire is the positive for the fuel pump. And that'll come on when you first turn the key on, it'll prime the fuel pump and then shut it off and then wait again for the cranking signal to return the fuel pump back on like an OE car. And then the next long wire is the heavy red and that's marked for the battery. So that'll go directly to the positive on your battery. The next is the yellow and that is the fan control wire. So this will turn a single fan on and control it at whatever program temperature you want that. So it'll turn the fan on and off at a program temperature and you can do that with your keypad inside the car. So this grounds the fan. So you do need a relay to turn that on. So this will trigger the ground on a relay and turn your fan on. So then after that, you've got your white wire, which is your key positive. And this needs to be key in the on and crank position. So remember, that's very important that the key positive doesn't drop out during cranking. So a lot of guys will make that mistake. So make sure you check it with the test light that it's key positive in the on and cranking position. So a lot of good place for that is, um, you know, where you get power to an HEI distributor or, you know, just make sure to test it. And also make sure that it is 12 volts. A lot of cars do have a ballast resistor and it drops it down to nine volts. You want to check that with a, um, with a voltmeter. Then you have your tack wire and this would come off the negative side of a coil or the tack output from a CDI box. So that could be the spade on the side of an MSD brand or anywhere where you'd get your tack signal to run a, um, you know, a tachometer. And then the black wire would be an accessory wire and that's configurable. A lot of guys use this for um, dropping out your, um, your closed loop if you're running nitrous. Again, this is a configurable, configurable um, input and it has many uses that are explained in the instructions. But on this wire, on this installation, we're gonna use five wires. This one won't be used, we don't have any accessories on it. We're gonna use the five wires, basically the fan control and the four basic wire hookup. You can get the car running with as simple as four wires on our EFI systems. That would be, and the basic positive, um, you know, uh, fuel pump, tack and battery. And the systems are grounded through the throttle body. So this one stud on the throttle body acts as your ground. So hooking up the power brakes to the right rear, 3 8 vacuum nipple, and the PCV to the left rear, 3 8 vacuum nipple. And on this car, we don't have any vacuum advance or um, transmission modulator, so we don't need to use any of the uh, 3 16 uh, vacuum ports. So we're good in the back. Um, these two wires will go to the handheld and again this will be the feed in on for the fuel pressure and this will be the return fuel from the regulator and we have the front two ports blocked off but if you were feeding from the front you could move this port up and put this port in the back and block it off you could also use this one as the feed and again this is the ecu for the uh for the system so the whole computer is mounted right up here in the front so next we're going to move, install the, um, the linkage ball up here and hook up the throttle cable. If you're using a returnless kit or our fuel command center and you need to block off this return port, this is the, the fitting that you use to block it off. It doesn't look like it fits in this port but when you remove this, the threads are smaller and this is the port that fits. 
So just snug that up, and that is the port that blocks off that return. So that is for blocking off for the command center and makes it a returnless style EFI system. So that blocks the return port off on the Fitech EFI systems. And that comes in the kit in the top portion of the box. Okay, on the throttle linkage, you've got your, um, your transmission kickdowns on the side, and then there's multiple holes on this, on this linkage. I recommend that you put it in the upper hole over here, the smaller hole up at the top, not this one. This one seems to be very touchy with the throttle pedal, um, just in my experience. Um, move it up to the top hole here, and it'll be a smoother pedal, and just give you a lot better pedal feel. So we installed the ball up here, and we're gonna snap this on. And we're ready to install our fuel lines, get our O2 sensor uh, plumbed in, and get to the handheld setup. We finished installing the fuel lines on this installation and I just wanted to point out on the fuel pressure regulator there is this little nipple right here and on normally aspirated cars this does not have to go anywhere but also do not plug it off don't put a cap on this this needs to be uh, vented to the atmosphere so the only time you'd hook any hose up to this nipple is if you were running boosted blow through um, supercharger or turbo so on normally aspirated applications just leave this nipple just the way it comes out of the box the only time you would use it is if you have a, a root style uh, sorry a um, centrifugal supercharger or a turbo and you'll see that in the instructions when to use it so 90 percent of you guys don't need it leave it don't put a um a cap on it leave it normally uh, normally vented to the atmosphere next will be to route the oxygen sensor wire, the wideband O2 wire down away from any heat and we'll get it down out of the way and we'll put the O2 sensor in and we'll make sure that we get this all zip tied up and out of the way so it doesn't get burned. We'll get under the car and show you how to put the O2 sensor in next. The kit comes with this stainless steel clamp on or weld on O2 bung. I'm not going to drill a hole on this in this system. I'm just going to do it for demonstration purposes because this Chevelle already has a O2 bung already welded into it. But just to show you how this works, there's a gasket, an O2 bung, and two stainless steel clamps. So you position it, mark it, drill it, and you could do that with a step drill. So um, after you drill it, you just put the clamps over it, tighten them up with the nut driver, or a ratchet, yeah, nice and snug, and then install your O2 sensor in the hole. And I like to put it, you know, you could put it in front of the, uh, you know, in front of the um, collector is a nice place or right behind it. Just put it, you know, either, you know, level or just above level. You just don't want to go below where the O2 sensor is angling down like this. So just flat or just slightly above is the best position for an O2 sensor. And it could be on the inside or the outside. Just keep it out of the way of anything moving like transmission linkages or anything that's going to get in the way. Then tie up the wires nice and neat. Make sure nothing gets burned and connect it up to your, to your EFI and you're ready to go. All right, so we've installed the uh, O2 sensor in the existing uh, O2 bung, and then we're just gonna snap it in and pull it up out of the way, and we'll zip tie it up top. All right, so everything's hooked up, and we're about to start the cart for the first time, and what you're gonna wanna do is probably have a buddy or somebody turn the key on because you're gonna need to check the fuel leaks and at your connections. So we've got the handheld all hooked up, but right now we're not going to be too concerned with that. We're going to be listening for the fuel pump to turn on and the injectors to make a clicking sound. And they'll fire when you turn the key on. The injectors will actually click and shoot a little bit of fuel in, and the fuel pump will turn on momentarily and then turn back off. So you know, go ahead and turn the key on, and you'll hear the fuel pump turn on, and there's a small click. Fuel pump runs, shuts off, and we'll check. 
around and there's no no leaks the fuel pumps not running we got a little bit of spray of fuel out of the throttle body so we'll key back off and then we'll go and we'll set up the handheld so we're going to turn the key to the on position and you're going to hear the fuel pump turn on and then there's a lot of things you could do with the dash with the uh, handheld so we're going to go through um, first you've got the dashboard that'll tell you all of the uh, parameters you can click through this is a touch screen as well as joystick control so as you click to the right you can go through different screens and you can go up and down as they turn yellow that's what you're on each one of those um, areas but and then touch screen goes brings you back but what we're going to be interested in right now for starting the car for the first time is initial setup so we go down to initial setup we hit enter and we want to go to engine setup so engine setup and cylinders are eight we want to bring the engine up to 408 cubic inches hit enter and camshaft selection on this car is cam three it's a pretty wild camshaft and again one is mild basically stock two would be you know what most people have just a mild performance camshaft if you don't know what you have just pick two that'll kind of get you through any setup and uh, three is pretty radical street cam that's what this motor is and rev limit we're gonna set this motor at 7,000 then next is your idle speed warm that's what you want the car to idle at when it's warmed up and then your tack or two wire um, on the mean street you only have one selection and that's tack we can't control the timing so you don't have the option of controlling timing so that'll only come pre-selected as tack on this controller so you have to hit remember you have to hit the the push in the button and it sends it if you don't push the the button in it's not a complete send so then you can go back you'd go to your fan setup and they come preset at 174 on 172 off with the fan enabled if you're not running the fan controller you would go down to the fan enabling and switch it to disable and hit send to ECU if you don't do that it will throw a, a trouble code won't do anything wrong to the ECU but it'll tell you that your fans not working um, there the Fitech ECU has a lot of trouble codes it's like an OE computer um, it will tell you if there's anything wrong any of you know onboard diagnostics it'll tell you that we do have the fan enabled so I'm going to go back and enable that and that's about it for getting yourself set up so what I like to do is go back and bring yourself back to the dashboard where I could see what's going on I'm going to go ahead and hit the key This completes the installation on our 69 Chevelle. You can find all these components on summitracing.com.